names are important because they are the tag that actually identifies what we mean before part of the living world. 250 years ago, scientists were first at the point of discovering what biodiversity means. And there was one incredibly foresightful scientist named Linnaeus, Carl Linnaeus. There was no convention governing biological nomenclature before him. And so it was very difficult to make sure who discovered what animal. So you have two names that go with these species. There is a genus name, and then there is a so-called specific epithet, which is telling us what species within that genus we're talking about. It's a binomial nomenclature. Nomenclature, but it's stabilized by the process of tying a name to a type specimen. This individual specimen, the holotype, represents our ideal of the species. And it's quite the onus to name a holotype. It's a permanent, a permanent reference that people can look back at for hundreds of years. It helps us link names, that is taxonomy, to species out there living, living in the world. The names, they mean something because they're defined specifically by the holotype. The organizations that hold those type specimens provide an incredibly useful service. They provide archives of biodiversity. Biodiversity is a difficult thing to catalog and to, and to quantify. It gets harder and harder to pull together all of that information, tying the biology of the future to what we know from the past. The names themselves need some kind of an archiving process. The ICZN, International Commission on Zoological Nomenclature, is also providing a new web tool which allows access to its official registry of scientific names of animals, and that's called ZooBank. ZooBank is, of course, web-based, so anybody in Sri Lanka, in Colombia, anybody can go in and check. Here at the Field Museum, too, we're connecting to data sets across the globe, at other institutions. The power of the data is in the access to assist answering questions about global biodiversity.